Hello and welcome to this episode of the Nothing Ventured Primer with me, Arish Shah. And today we're in the beautiful new studios here at LaunchPod. Uh, today, though, I'm super excited to have with me in the studio Anishka Prashad. Anishka is the founder of Astra, a network of inspiring and aspiring angel investors that showcase and invest in underrepresented and female founded businesses. And she is the head of strategy and operations at Future VC, which provides internships and masterclasses to aspiring VCs from underrepresented backgrounds. Anishka, it is super awesome to have you here in the studio with me here today. Thank you so much for having me. No, lovely. Let's dive straight in. So um, it would be great if you could give our listeners a bit of background about yourself and your journey sort of, you know, from your initial stages uh, in your career all the way through to what you're doing today. Sure. Um, so I started off my career in law. I was a litigator to start off with and uh, I gradually made my way towards the commercial corporate law side of things. Um, gradually kept on going, eventually ended up doing an MBA. Um, that's when I moved to the UK um, and I started a company of my own. It was legal tech. Um, and then after that, I became an investor. So that's kind of in a nutshell what where I'm at at the moment. And I also work in operational roles startups etc and i like to give advice where i can basically amazing and and that's typically as an advisor or do you go in kind of directly into the in, into the founding team or how does that work um i think a bit of both so um i i generally know the struggle of a startup and most most teams don't have capital so um, I provide my time sometimes to just maybe look at their pitch decks to h help them with their fundraising. Having been a founder and having had battle scars, I think I understand that most founding teams want to do better than they can in terms of getting investors in. So um, I try and sort of understand how I can be of help at that time, whether it's by with advice, small capital checks, etc. because I'm an angel as well. Um, but primarily to be able to, you know, uh, sort of guide them with the with the sort of journey that they're on and potentially add value as well. Yeah, I mean, typical kind of all, all, all investors like to add value, how can they be helpful? But you know, it sounds like you actually are, which is which is, uh, which is great. And, and let's talk about Astra for a second. So, um, you know, it, it is a sort of loose syndicate. And we, we can talk about that in more detail on the main podcast but you know generally speaking what is the thesis you know what sort of geographies do you invest in what are the check sizes that you typically deploy how, do, how does it work so Astra is basically a community at this stage. I mean, we launched about eight weeks ago and it came out of my personal frustration of trying to become an angel investor and just kind of knocking on doors that didn't let me in. Um, I understood that I had the background for it. Um, I was a founder and I had capital, <laughs> um, small capital, but I still had capital and I had the advice. So it wasn't dumb money. It was basically smart money. And I understood that there were quite a few people in my network who are in a very similar position, unable to invest in, for instance, housing, et cetera, but had still capital to deploy into an asset classification that would you know get them some returns in the end like through startups so essentially I, I came up with Astra just to see how far it would go and it's only been eight weeks and we've had about a hundred and forty investors sign up in the first four weeks oh, amazing. So, so that's great um, in terms of how we were a bit different to the other angel syndicates we're not a syndicate at this stage so it's primarily educating people how to invest in various theses and whether this is the right sort of investment track for you because every angel investor brings different value and I, I strongly acknowledge that I think some investors are probably great for fintech some not so much and others have strengths and for instance health tech etc yeah and and also operationally they may may have different kind of Definitely. uh backgrounds and, and and advice that they can give and so you're not yet a syndicate so so you're not deploying uh capital uh via via astra as yet is that right yeah that's right oh uh, uh, so baby steps i think we're in a phase where we're trying to find out um appetite for people to invest um and exactly what stage of affordability there might be as well because i mean uh, if you are a switched on angel you're not going to do it towards the end of your career and, and retirement phase to just blow all the cash that you have you would start off with smaller checks and potentially diversify it to to the extent that you know best so um at this stage being at the stage that we we're at 
I wouldn't say that we're a full-blown syndicate. We're definitely creating a community. We um, care about certain people um, in terms of the angel network, in terms of trying to get their educational levels up, understanding what a cap table looks like, the very definition of what makes a startup tick. Mm -hmm. um, how, where do they come in as an angel investor and not essentially start running the company? Because <laughs> most angels make that mistake as well, where they become a sort of quasi-founder CEO at the same time because they haven't done it before. So like assessing limits and basically trying to educate people on where your role should be as an angel investor is where we're at. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Now, as you said, you are an angel yourself, and I know uh, that you can't talk specifically about some of the investments you've made because uh, they're, they're currently in stealth. But you know, give us uh, sort of an idea of what sort of technologies and 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 verticals are exciting you at the moment. I think I personally have always been drawn to um, fintech and B2B SaaS solutions. My my personal company that I'd created a few years back, Resolve, it was a SaaS solution for lawyers. Um, I understand that market better in terms of, um, in comparison to rather uh, of B2C, for instance. So I naturally get gravitated to SaaS businesses in particular the verticals that I'm interested in would be fintech at the moment, as well as Gen AI. I think it's a, it's a huge space for um, that's evolving and um, due to due to the recent chat GPT um, evolution as well there's there's a lot of a lot of goals that can be achieved now that were impossible in the future in the, in the past rather so I think companies are excited it's not ne necessarily like replacing the technology that we know as is and the process is not different in terms of deploying um, certain types of technology and capital etc but it is very much a space that excites me because it's evolving. So um, that's something that I'm more interested in. At the moment. Yeah, and, and especially in legal tech, I mean, there's a couple of businesses that I'm somewhat close to that, uh, you know, have, have done some amazing things, even pre-OpenAI uh, and ChatGPT, uh, in terms of, uh, <coughs> uh, you know, how, how they uh, make the creation of legal documents more yeah. uh, more efficient, um, you know, essentially creating them from from scratch and uh, allowing the lawyer to actually you know save both time and yeah. uh, potentially errors in uh, drafting of legal documents and and actually add the value in terms of actually scrutinizing those um, to make them better. Um, so look. Uh, we're going to get into a lot of this stuff uh, in the main podcast. Uh, Anishka, thank you so much uh, for joining me here today. Thank you.